Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. And let's go to that south region, uh, or excuse me, yeah, the south region, the upper right of your bracket where Houston is the one seed, Marquette is the two, uh, the three seed is the University of Kentucky, and the fourth seed, of course, is Duke. A couple things, I keep saying it, Houston, watch the status of Juwan Roberts. He's kind of one of those toughness energy guys. And remember, Houston is a team that is down three guys right now from the start of the season that were in their rotation that are not playing. You lose him, you start to see how shorthanded this team was. He only played a few minutes against Iowa State, so that's a story to monitor. He did play against Iowa State. You wonder if he'll be available. I also think it's worth noting uh, Texas Tech. I would argue of their three most important players, two did not play in their most recent Big 12 championship game. Darion Williams, who's like a big guard, 6'5", 6'6", can kind of defend multiple positions. He did not play, but he is expected back. Warren Washington to me is the X factor. Seven foot one, seven foot two, just a big seven footer, fifth year guy. And I bring it up because that is the kind of guy you start to look at around a 32. Where's Kentucky's weakness in the paint? Do they have guys that can consistently get them buckets? You need, you know, if you're Texas Tech, you're going to need Warren Washington. But if you have them, you could give Kentucky fits. A couple things stand out about this region. Let's start. I mean, oh, by the way, Tyler Kolick from Marquette, that goes without saying. I think the thing that stands out, you know, Kentucky, we talk enough about him. We know a lot about Calipari. We know what's at stake. He's not getting fired if he loses in this tournament. But, you know, you haven't been to a, a you haven't been to the second weekend since 2019. And I know 2020, you were good enough to win a national championship with Tyrese Maxey, Emmanuel Quickly, and all that. But you have not been to a to the second weekend since 2019. You have not been to a Final Four since 2015. And I think all things considered, this bracket lays out pretty well for you. And with Kentucky, I'll say it's tough to evaluate them. Because on the one hand, you can't unsee what you saw against Texas A&M on Friday. And I think more than just the defensive goals, they just didn't show up ready to play. And you cannot do that when you have thousands of fans paying their hard-earned money to come see you play in Nashville. You can't just have a no-show. You cannot. And so I solely bring it up because you can't unsee that. But I also don't want to dismiss what this team did over the last five weeks when they won at Tennessee, when they won at Auburn, when they beat Alabama, when they beat Ole Miss, when they beat uh, uh, Mississippi State on the road. I mean, those three wins, just think about that. At Auburn, at Mississippi State, at Tennessee. You win those three games. You can beat anybody in college basketball on a neutral court. And I do think, especially if Texas Tech is not healthy, this bracket lines up nicely for you. You have to get to the Sweet 16. And when you get to the Sweet 16, you know, you've beaten Florida. You, you're playing a Marquette team that's not 100%. That's a game that you should be competitive in. Now, you get to Houston, that's a different conversation. A couple other thoughts on this bracket. One, Marquette. Are they healthy? I don't know. And Marquette's another one I'm a little torn on. Because when I look at Marquette, what stands out to me, is that on the one hand, they made the Big East Championship game without their star guard, Tyler Kolick, okay? Credit to them, that was an impressive run. But when you really break it down, they got to the Big East Championship game. They got destroyed by UConn, even though it was close for about 20, you know, 23, 24, 25 minutes. They also needed overtime against Villanova. They also had to pull away late against the Providence team that was beat up, down guys, third game and third night, short bench, whatever. So are they really that improved? Are they really that good? Or could they have lost in their opener of the Big East tournament, not even made it to Friday, let alone Saturday? Florida, we all saw that gruesome injury from their center, Micah Hanlogton. I'll be curious to see how that how they handle that. He was a, an important part. I wouldn't say he was the be-all, end-all, because he was a guy, like he was a starter, but he didn't necessarily play a ton of, of minutes. And so I just bring it up because, um, you know, you look at that injury on the one hand, it could just be one where Florida doesn't recover from that. On the other hand, he was playing about 19 minutes per game. Tyree Samuel played a lot at that five spot. 
They play a lot of four out guards. And so I just, I don't know what to expect from them in that spot. Uh, beyond that, I'm trying to think of what else stands out. I'll tell you what stands out. I got an upset for you. I got an upset that I truly believe in my heart of hearts. I truly believe, I think Vermont's beating Duke. And I've, I've been out on Duke for weeks now. And I'll tell you, I was in on Duke. And when you just, it's not even competitive against Carolina at home. And then you really start to break down their resume. We talked about it. Think about Duke's resume right now. Lose to Arizona in the non-con. Okay, that's no problem. Lose at Arkansas in the non-con. Lose at Georgia Tech, which was your ACC opener. Then you get to ACC play. You do have a nice win over Baylor, but you get to ACC play. The ACC, apparently to everyone except for the tournament committee, was really down this year. Clemson is an at-large team. You beat them by two at home and need the ref's help. You get swept by Carolina. And so you start to look at the Duke resume. You start to peel it back, and you know what you see? You see a team that, if we're being honest, there's really not that much there. There's a win against Baylor. That's a good win on a neutral where you had the decided fan advantage. And there's a great win, or there's a win against Michigan State that most of us don't even think should be in the tournament. Now, you want to talk NC State? Okay, they're in the tournament. They, they had to win five games in five days, whatever. I just bring it up because it's hard for me to get excited about this Duke team. And I'll say this. Duke doesn't have very much size, and the way to beat Duke, you limit the three-point shooting. What does Vermont do well? Vermont takes away the three-point shot. Top 50 nationally in three-point shooting. I'm calling it now. That is an upset.